What's happening everybody? Welcome to today's stream. Hope everybody's doing good today. It looks like I was kind of skimming through the comments. Looks like uh, uh, Philip had a, a little bit of a surgery, so uh, hopefully that heals up quick. Um, and I actually just put an order in finally for some molds and all kinds of good stuff on your website, so I can't wait for that. Uh, and we still need to talk a little bit about the 3D printing stuff, and uh, I, I, now I can't exactly remember. I had so many custom things that I wanted Philip to make me uh, molds. Uh, we'll have to talk about that down the road, though. But anyway, uh, welcome to the stream. So today we are going to be doing something. I, I wanted to cover kind of a topic, and also because I'm kind of low on resin, I thought this would be a perfect time to use up some old resin. All right, so we're going to kind of talk about, you know, old resin. Uh, is it too old? You know, that kind of stuff. And then we'll do some experiments and just uh, use some of it up. So it should be kind of fun. Uh, we have lots of uh, little updates and things today. So let's start with some pen blanks that I finally got cut up. Um, these were the second batch of hybrids. And man, these things turned out pretty cool. They got some sparkle in there. We did some custom colors uh, in there as well. And some orange. And then we got, uh, this is all just clear stabilized Buckeye Burl. So that was that one. And then we did some kind of experiments with uh, the, that kind of opal look. I don't know if they turned out as well as I would have hoped necessarily, but I do think they're going to look amazing. Uh, just I, you kind of need a little bit darker uh, color, I think, with that. But uh, pretty happy. And again, this is a uh, Buckeye Burl, but I, I die stabilized it. Um, so the reason that uh, we didn't get these things um, finished or, you know, why well, I didn't get them cut up already <laughs> to show you guys was I blew a break on my saw stop. Uh, I was cutting some of those honeycomb blanks for Carl. <laughs> and of course I took, it didn't, didn't happen for any of his blanks. It was like this extra thing that I would just went back and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to trim this up. Didn't think to turn the break off and it blew the break. So I had been out for like, I mean, it's <laughs> like two, two weeks without a table saw, probably something like that. It was nuts. And then I ordered a new break put it in the table saw and then it went off also for no apparent reason, which that that's the first time that that's happened to me with that, with the saw stop. But I think what might've happened was I didn't um, double check to make sure that the, the break and the, the saw blade were close enough or like the right distance. That might've been what happened because I put some new ones in, finally got some new ones and haven't had any issues. So now the table saw works again and we can get some work done. So that's pretty nice. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share is, let's see, where's the, oh, I don't have the other ring. Uh, for the patrons, you guys have already seen this, but, um, well, you haven't seen this necessarily. So we did some ring making on the last, don't look at that one. This is my silicone ring. Um, we did some ring making on the last patron hangout on Friday, and I finished up the second one. So we kind of did like a baking show style thing where I, I assembled this one. Um, but I had one that was already pre-assembled that we actually kind of finished up. Um, that one is actually, Gretchen already has that one, so, <laughs> so you can't see the other one. Let's see if I can get this thing to kind of focus. It's kind of hard to, to zoom in on something that's like super shiny like this, but I'm really happy with this. This, unfortunately, it, uh, it would fit down there. I just, it doesn't fit over my knuckle. So I might need a slightly bigger ring, but I'm super stoked about that. If you guys haven't done ring making, um, it is super fun. Uh, I got this uh, this kind of kit thing. Chad over at Turner's Warehouse sent me um, this little station thing, and you can put your mandrel in there, and then you put your ring on the mandrel, and you can kind of work on it at a desk and get everything going. You know, doing like the assembly, putting your you know whatever you want to put in there, opals or watch parts or you know whatever. Um, get everything kind of set, and then go over to the lathe. And the the, the awesome thing is, all you got to do is. Um, there's, there's really no turning. Uh, you don't need to turn it. You just basically sand and polish and you're done. And it's pretty a pretty quick process. People love them. They're super popular. Um, they sell, you know, so it's kind of a cool thing. Um, they're fun to make too. The one thing about it, if you're in a hurry, <laughs> there's a lot of like, you're trying to like situate little rocks and fill stuff and do all this stuff. So, you know, make sure you have some time and you're not going to be impatient about it. But as long as you're focused on you know that that's this you know what you're in for kind of thing it's really fun to make them so hopefully you'll try that out uh, turner's warehouse has all kinds of supplies they have those like i said those little stand things which i think are pretty helpful they got the the mandrels um, and all of the the you know ring cores 
um, infill stuff that you could ever need and they even have little kits and all that kind of stuff and the uv resin so head over to turner's warehouse if you need ring making supplies pretty cool stuff oh thanks kim yeah i'm i'm really happy with that one um what i did with this one let me oh, let me tell you what i what's actually going on in this um the only the tough thing is it's really it, it looks really awesome up like in person it's really difficult to get a good shot of this let me see if i can like zoom in way much, way, way much, uh, way far. So what I did was I actually, so I painted the channel black and then I applied a really thin coat of blue to purple color shift powder. And I don't know if that's, oh, see, it's, it doesn't want to, yeah, you can kind of see, see how it's like blue, like right in the middle, it looks kind of blue. And then when you turn it, it's kind of purple. So yeah, it's really tough. This thing doesn't want to focus. Um, and then what I did was used um, some Easy Inlay brand crushed opals. They're kind of like a blue and green kind of thing. So, and I, I spaced them apart because I wanted to see what that, oh, sorry. I wanted to see what that uh, color shift powder looked like. Really not wanting to focus on this thing, but and the, the glare, sorry about that. It's tough to, tough to get a good shot you know unless you have like perfect conditions on the fly it's a little tough on these types of things but pretty fun stuff pretty excited hey thanks daryl i appreciate it uh let's see here so the other thing that's going on well let's see i got a sticker lumalite sent me a little christmas gift kind of thing like a, a tumbler and a hat and some stickers and i don't have their new stickers so i thought we would put one up while we're uh hanging out here so we'll just kind of Hmm. Where do I want to put it? I think right here, or maybe like right there. That, that's a perfect spot for this size sticker. So I think you guys can, you can see, yeah. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit of alcohol real quick. First get a, get a wipey and um, clean off the pot. And then we'll put up an Illuminolite sticker. I don't have, I don't think I have any Illuminolite stickers. And this is like their new, the new branding kind of stuff. So even if I had some, it would have been the old ones. All right, so we'll just clean off that surface a bit. And let's see how easy this is going to be to get off. I like the ones that have like the little cut in the middle and you just bend them and pop it off. I'm to get my Oh, this one's not too bad. Not too bad. It was it had kind of it's not the all the way to the edge kind of thing. Well, there we go. We got some alumalite on the pressure pot. I got a lot of alumalite on my pressure pots, I think. <laughs> Now we got a sticker. So pretty sweet. Oh, oh, glow powder, that would be sweet, yeah. Is there a list of supplies one needs to make a ring? Um, yeah. It's, there's not, it's actually not a lot of stuff. Um, I can kind of show you what I use. Uh, you don't need that tray necessarily. I will say it, it makes things nice. If you can sit at the lathe comfortably, then all you need is your is the mandrel in your lathe, you know, kind of thing. Um, so let's see here. So I have a collet chuck. You don't necessarily need to have a collet chuck. It just, they're meant to, to grab round things pretty well. You can use just a drill chuck with, with, the, um, with the mandrel and that will be fine. Let me see if I can, oh, that thing's stuck on there. This is a, uh, is a mandrel, a ring mandrel. Turner's Warehouse has these. You're gonna really, I would recommend getting one of these. You can like make one and, and there's a couple other like types. I'd, I don't know. I think that you're best off just spending the money, get, get a proper ring mandrel. Um, they have a couple different sizes um, because like women's rings are usually gonna be pretty small diameter. Men's rings are bigger. So, you know, you need to have I think you can get away with just having two different ones. If you're going to just be making men's rings or a certain size, then you can just get away with one mandrel. Um, what you do to um, put all the stuff in there, you're going to use UV resin. I like Aluma UV. Let me switch to this camera if you haven't seen this stuff. UV resin rocks. Um, it has unlimited open time, but then what you do is you use a little flashlight, a little black, it's like a UV flashlight and you just hit it and that cures it <laughs> so it doesn't fully cure it but it locks it in place like it hardens whenever you hit it with uv light 
So you're just kind of going around placing um, little crushed opals or you can do all kinds of stuff. You can honestly just use resin, um, you know, like the, the UV resin with um, mica powder if you wanted. Um, but a lot of people will use, you know, like glow powders or, or these crushed opals. And Turner's Warehouse has everything that you need for ring making, basically. They got a whole section. Uh, you might want some tweezers, possibly. One thing that's very helpful um, to make these things is a pair of like your, your kind of magnifying lenses. Because you're working with something kind of small. So, and Turner's Warehouse has these. Where the heck did the things go? Uh oh, where did my, lost my goggles. They have a really nifty set, and I don't know what I, where I put mine. Well, hmm. Gotta be around here somewhere. Um, these will do in a pinch, uh, something like this. A lot of us, oh, wrong camera. These will do in a pinch. Um, a lot of people have these in their workshop. Um, there's another style though that works that it's just not as heavy and they, they seem to work a little bit better You can even switch the lenses out a lot of times and I cannot find Oh, here they are here they are This style um, They just kind of work a little easier. Um, I find they're they have a light a lot of times and they're just not as I don't know heavy You don't have this whole thing around your face um, so Turner's Warehouse has these. So let me get you a link. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, that I use. Um, and then what you do is you just, on, when, you're, when you're done placing all the stuff in the UV resin, um, you get your ring ready. Um, then all you do is just sand it and polish it. Um, and one thing that I did on the, the stream um, this time was I, I tried the uh, Magic Juice polish and that stuff worked really well. Um, so you just wet sand up to a certain point and then you can use that polish or you can just wet sand all the way up to You know super high super high grit so Let me let me get a link for you and you can kind of um, Oh and the other the other thing that you're gonna need is ring cores um, And so I have a, there's a bunch of different types So the type that I made if you're gonna be placing opals and all that kind of stuff They have a channel in the middle and then there's other types of ring cores. This is a totally different way of, of making it, but they're just basically a big metal bound that, and then you would actually have to turn that down. So that's a little bit different way. They're both, both ways are awesome, fun projects. So let me, let me get you a link really, really quick here, and you can just tool around in there. Um, check out all this stuff. Uh, Chad has a ton of videos. He's got some really good ones. I have one. I would probably refer, I don't, I didn't post that. That other one was for patrons only uh, that I did. Hold on a minute. Here we go. Here's your, here's your link. Boom. Um, so head over to, to Chad's YouTube channel. Down here. I'm going to refer you to his channel and then you can just search on his channel or search Chad Schimmel and ring or whatever. He's got some excellent videos. There's, there's a link to that. So, uh, and like I said, Turner's warehouse has pretty much everything you ever needed. I don't, I can't think of anything that they don't have <laughs> offhand. Um, they even have, if you were interested in buying a call it Chuck, they got that. Um, Everything you need, even the abrasives and stuff. So. Yeah, I, that's that's one thing that I mentioned also. You, uh, I think you could get away with using a drill press. It would not be, I don't know, I think a lathe is better. You know, it's just if you have a lathe, I, I would use a lathe. But I think you could use a drill press. I was even saying that, you know, like really, really worst case scenario, you could probably get away. I would probably recommend using a, a corded drill, but you could probably mount that. I know most of your drills will fit that half inch shank on, on one of those things. You could mount your drill, plug it in, turn it on to, you know, where most of those, oh, let's see, does my drill, I don't know if my drill actually has a thing that you can lock it on, but most of the plug-in ones do. And you could probably get away with just sanding it with a hand drill, honestly. 
So lots of different ways you can do it. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then the last thing that uh, I wanted to kind of mention before we start rocking with this uh, stuff is I got a 3D printer and I got it set up, guys. And I'm working on a video, a real video, not a live stream or anything, um, to kind of show you the, the, you know, what's going on with that thing. Uh, so far, I'm really happy with it. It's been pretty simple uh, in general. I did have the first prints that I did <laughs> failed horribly, but um, it was my own fault and it was just a silly mistake. But um, really happy with the quality of resin 3D printers. Um, and, and they're pretty simple. They're a little bit, it feels like it's a little slower than my other printers, but I think these things are going to be a lot better for turning. Um, I, I just, I was never really happy. This is, a, this is one of the big reasons why I never really got very into uh, or, or kept going with um, the other 3D printing stuff. Because I used to sell blanks that had stuff and I had tried some different things. But it just, the materials that I used at least, so that I tried, it just, it didn't turn that great. I, I didn't find it to be particularly amazing. So, um, and it was kind of difficult messing around with that printer. So I'm, I got a lot of ideas with this resin printer though, um, and it works a little bit differently. So lots of ideas. It's going to be pretty fun. I'll be do, doing quite a few videos, I think, on that. There's, there's, just, there's a lot of angles. It's, it's a different game, kind of. Um, very similar, but it's kind of a different game, I'm finding, than the regular filament style printers with resin casting, combining the two of those things. So anyway, we'll have some videos coming soon. Um, all right, so for today, the first thing that I want to talk about, though, with resin, you know, old resin, basically. Um, actually, let me, let me stop and just make sure that there's no questions about anything that I said. Yeah, you, you need to, uh, yeah, fully cure your stuff, too. That, that works. The, the sunlight works. Um, the, the flashlight is just to lock it in. It's not going to fully cure it. Um, one of the things, we're in winter, and a lot of us, you know, you may not have sunlight, um, so what I do is I use that little UV nail curing <laughs> light. And actually, I, I think Turner's Warehouse has these too, possibly. Oh, shoot. I just unplugged my wrong thing. That sucks. That print's not going <laughs> to turn out. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, I unplugged my 3D printer in the middle of a print. That was silly. So this is... Hopefully you'll, you'll actually utilize this because I just ruined a print, but um, this is a, a UV light curing th kind of thing. And I use this for finishes on turn projects. I kind of mount it on the lathe somehow. Um, a couple different things, um, but it works for your UV uh, resin prints as well. Damn, that was stupid. Uh, but anyway, let's see here. Roll back down, I think we're good. So. Um, so anyway, let's jump into the, the, the old resin thing. Let's get started for today. I know I've been kind of blabbing for a while. Um, so if you have resin that's been sitting around, you know, most of these resins have a shelf life. I, I mean, it, I gotta be honest, they, they just keep going down. Um, Alumalite Clear, I wanna say that they actually state that the shelf life is like three months at this point, which I think is a little bit, I think they're being very, very conservative with that. <clears throat> it used to be like four to six months, I think, when I got started. Um, some of your epoxies um, will go up to like 12 months. Uh, it just kind of depends. Uh, make sure to read the, the, the instructions or, or the, you know, manufacturer's data, basically, about your resin, whatever you're using. Um, that'll tell you what the shelf life is, but that doesn't necessarily mean that if you had it for 12 months that it doesn't work, all right? So um, just, just to let you know. The, now, the thing that you need to do is generally and this is, I already did this today. If you have resin and you're not sure if it's good or bad, then just pour some and don't put any stuff in it. Just pour some clear. Now you don't necessarily need to pour a gigantic, um, you know, jug of it like this. I, I wanted to pour kind of a bigger one just so it'd be easier to see what was going on. Um, mix up a little bit. Um, I would, I would recommend getting it a little bit higher than normal than like a tiny amount because if it would take forever for it to kind of set up and cure um, and if you're going to be pouring a larger amount typically then i think that it would be better to you know you know waste a decent amount of resin you want to know if this stuff works or not and you want it to be somewhat similar in the same range as what you're going to be pouring all right so do a test 
um, don't do a super, super tiny test because that's, unless that's what you're going to be doing. Um, but you'll have to wait longer. But this hardened up fine. It's hard. It's clear. Um, I think what I would look for, um, sometimes discoloration in the bottle will happen. Uh, like, so I don't know what deep, this is deep pour. Um, I, whoa, I don't know what the, the side B typically looks like, but I don't think that it's usually this yellow. Um, now, resin can be yellow and, and things can change batch to batch, but I don't think this started out as yellow as this is. Um, amazing clear cast, that's what this is. Um, and that's, that was the main thing. This stuff is pretty old. This is definitely over, I would say this is over a year old. Um, this stuff doesn't look too bad. It's not particularly yellow in the jug. Um, kind of what it looks like. This is the part A. Usually it's blue tinted like this. And again, amazing clear cast is different than Alumilite clear, different than deep pour. Um, but here's some, and this is a different one than, than that, but this is amazing clear cast plus, and you can see in the jug, I mean, it's pretty white, clear looking. Again, blue for the part A. Um, it's a different formula, but I think they're very similar. Now this one is a little bit more yellow, I would say yellowish. It has more color to it, but it's not particularly yellow. You know, if you hold these two up, this one's definitely more yellow. So anyway, that can happen. Um, and the thing is, it may not have any effect. My whole point of talking about these colors is it may not have any effect on, you know, the final product. This is pretty clear. I mean, you know, it may not be as clear as like super fresh resin, but it's not like yellow. All right. So I would say that this is fine. Now, here's the other thing. If you're going to be putting a bunch of mica powders in your resin, who cares what it looks like? If it's, you know, as long as it's hard and, and it's normal, then you can use it. Um, that's the biggest thing with resins is people are a little bit worried about, you know, shelf life and does it work or not. As long as the, the resin works, you know, you do a test, do an experiment. If you're going to be making a pen blank, you might want to go the whole way and just, you know, pour a pen blank with your resin and let it cure like you normally would and then go and try turning it just to make sure, you know, especially if you're trying to sell stuff and you're, <laughs> you're using, you know, old resin, you might want to turn it and just make sure that it's acting properly. But as long as it hardens, that's the, that's typically resin that's not good will not harden properly properly it'll look funky um so i would say that we are probably good to go with this and there's a lot in here i mean it's it's barely broken into and the reason i have it sitting around is because right after i bought that or i i want to say that um actually what happened was i think alumalite sent that to me to do some testing with Mac like making micarta with that and I really had no other use for it. I didn't need two gallons of it. Um, but right after that, they came out with the ACC Plus, Amazing Clearcast Plus. And the difference between this and that other stuff is this has the UV inhibitors in it, and I like it better. Um, I've found a lot of uses for this stuff, and I just never reached for that. So we got that. We have some liquid diamonds. This stuff isn't particularly old, but I do have some of that that we can kind of play with if we run out of stuff. Um, but I, I do want to use up this deep pour as well. So, um, cause it's just been sitting there. Now I got some molds heating. Now here's the problem with this stuff. This is all epoxy and this is all like the 30 to 45 minute working time. Well, deep pour is like a two hour working time. So that'll be kind of interesting, but, <laughs> um, we're not going to be making color swirl blanks, um, with deep pour, um, cause we're not going to wait around two hours for it to, to get ready to, to mix. Um, I think that what, what I want to do is I want to mix up quite a bit of the Amazing Clearcast Plus, or not Plus, um, the, the Amazing Clearcast. I want to mix up a decent amount of that stuff. And what I want to do is I want to pour, I, I want to, like, I want to mix up a bucket, <laughs> you know, I want to mix a good amount of this stuff up. And what I want to do is we can utilize this as a test because I'm not particularly worried if we waste this resin. It doesn't matter to me, right? It's, it's, it's old and I don't use it obviously. So what I want to do is we're going to mix a big bucket up and we're going to do a couple of different things because it's a 30 to 40 minute working time to get good color separation for color swirl blanks. We need to wait 30 to 40 minutes uh, before we start pouring them together. Um, but what I want to do is do some experiments. Let's mix it up 
And this should make it so that we're not sitting around waiting uh, the whole time. I'm going to mix up a big bucket. And what I want to do is the experiment is going to be what happens when you mix this stuff, like pour it right away. We're going to mix up a few colors, pour it right away, and then we'll see the results of that uh, when we demold it. And then we'll let it, the rest of the bucket sit, pour some more out. And once it's reached, you know, I don't know what the, the correct temperature is for this resin. So we're, we're going to be kind of winging it a little bit. Um, but I would say, you know, 30 minutes or so and, and kind of check the temperature as well and see where we're at. And then wait and then do another um, pour and see what the results are and compare those two, the one that we poured right away to the one that we waited. So it should be kind of fun. <clears throat> yeah, all resins do yellow uh, over time, except I will say... That's sort of true, and it is, it is true eventually, but this amazing ClearCast Plus has UV inhibitors in it. I have a, a, a gear shift knob that's been in my truck the entire summer. I don't, we don't have a garage at home. It's been sitting out every single day in the sunlight, and it, it's still clear. <laughs> like That stuff's got some pretty good UV protection in it, so just to let you know. Um, but what I'm talking about, when, when I'm talking about this stuff, these tests, I'm talking about what does it look like in the cup when you, you know, when it hardens up, is it like yellow? That may be a pretty good indication that it's not, I don't know if you want to use it necessarily. And it will be a problem, um, you know, right away, it's going to be yellow. So that's <clears throat> what I wanted to kind of mention about that. <clears throat> Let's see, let me just see if I'm missing anything. Oh, Doug's here. What's up, man? To help cover my 3D loss. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. That really kind of pisses me off. I was doing a test. Uh, anyway, I don't want to think about it. Anyway, so let's uh, switch to the overhead and the, the double cam thing. We're going to mix up a ton of this resin. Um, I think we can put this liquid diamonds away because I don't think we're not going to need it. Uh, we got plenty of resin. We're only going to do so many things. Um, worst case scenario, we have this deep pour um, that we can do something with. I don't exactly know what. Um, uh, in the middle of those two um, pours uh, that we're going to do with the amazing clear cast. All right, so let me get some gloves on. Let me get the gloves on here. All right. <laughs> that much of your resin would melt the club. Yeah. Well, so we're going to, it's not going to be, I'm not mixing an entire bucket up, but I, I, I do want to have uh, enough because uh, we're going to be mixing up two. Well, we're going to be pouring one of these guys. Let's see here. So I actually, how's this going to work? We're going to pour this amount the first time. So that's probably going to be like 540 or so, five, five something, 500 and something grams. Oh, and these are the, the Jake Blanks molds. Jake Blanks uh, that he sent. I wanted to try these guys out. So I, I just wanted to kind of show you that. I'm going to pop this back into the oven. I think we're actually going to, I don't know. I'll keep that. I'll keep the other. And he sent two. He sent the, the singles and also some junk down in there and also this one. So I don't know exactly how we're going to do this, but I'm kind of more thinking that we'll just pour another brick like this. So let me spray this. And what I'm going to do is this should be, I would have, I would typically keep this in the oven for, for a little bit longer. I don't think it's going to be ready for that first batch. So we'll use the Jake Blanks mold for that. Put, put a little bit of stoner in this one. Mold release. For anybody that doesn't know what stoner is. Does this fit sideways? Yeah, sure. Okay. So that'll be for the second pour, and then maybe we can use the other one for the deep pour. Uh, the problem is deep pour, you know, this stuff has like a two hour working time. And, uh, you know, we definitely can't do uh, like color swirls. We can maybe just do an experiment. I do need to use this up, and we can kind of look at kind of the difference 
between, you know, deep pour and amazing clear cast. Like if you pour it right away kind of thing. So let's just do that. That'll be kind of something we can do in the middle. Now the deep pour technically, deep, this deep pour product from Illumilite is technically they kind of brought it out to do, you can see like, no, it doesn't say on there. Um, it, it, it was kind of developed for like res, re, uh, resin river tables. Um, so it's meant to be poured in like, you know, huge amounts, um, like, like volumes, but kind of spread out. And, and you can get away with pouring like, you know, like a river table up to two or three inches thick, like all at once. That's kind of what this was made for. Now, this amazing clear cast or the, even the, you know, either one, the, this regular one, or the, the ACC Plus, Amazing Clearcast Plus. This stuff is more like a bar top epoxy uh, made for like coating things. Uh, it works fine for pen blanks. Uh, you can get away easily making a brick of pen blanks, but you really don't wanna be pouring, you know, you wouldn't pour a river table with this stuff, okay? Definitely not. It's just not meant to be poured that thick with that much. Um, I use the ACC Plus version for coating uh, things for like a lot of times when I'm doing um, like a big bowl maybe or something like that or a vase, um, like large projects on the lathe. Um, I like to, to cover uh, resin projects with this stuff. Um, now they do also have a, like a quick, they call it quick coat. <laughs> I'm showing like all the Illumilite product line. They have this stuff. I've yet to use it. Um, but I guess this is upside down. Sorry about that. But um, this stuff, as far as I understand, doesn't have any UV blockers. So as a finish, I kind of prefer pulling ACC Plus out because it's got really good uh, UV blockers. And in that kind of case, my typical resin for pouring a gigantic pour is going to be Illumilite Clear Slow. And for most things, this is what I use most of the time. It has no UV inhibitors in it whatsoever. So I like that you can get a coated protection with heavy UV blockers over something that doesn't. So it's kind of, that's my personal preference. Um, I like that, that's what I like the ACC Plus for. So let's get, uh, let's get going here. I've been talking a lot, sorry guys. All right, so we're gonna do, how much do I need? Where's the liters? Three liters. Let me do a quick conversion really quick here. Twenty liters. Twenty ounces. So if my calculations are correct, I think that I pour, I think this uh like these molds are about a five by six, similar to Jake's too. Um, I think they're, they're gonna take about 20 ounces, maybe. Is that right? 21 ounces. Yeah, that's probably about right. Um, so I think I can get away with doing like 40 ounces. Let's see, let's, let's do, I'm just trying to figure out a, a, a system of pouring here, so. Um, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, um, so one part to one part. So where's my one-to-one? -one? These things are so confusing. There's so many lines on here. What's going on? I don't they just have a one-to-one. -one. Good Lord. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to do... Let's just mix up 48 ounces in this bucket. That's, that'll, whatever, that's fine. So 24 and then 48. So again, one to one. So we're gonna put 24 ounces of part A and then 24 more uh, of part B. All right, so let's get this going. Now, this stuff, the part A is super thick. I'm talking like blah, 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 blah. This stuff may kind of overheat a little bit in this bucket, like uh, Doug was talking about, his resin will, you know, overheat or whatever. Um, this stuff does not like being, uh, you know, mixed up in gigantic quantities either, but I'm hoping that because we're gonna 
pour out ha about half of it right off the bat. I'm hoping that uh, everything will work out okay. If not, oh well. Not the worst thing that could happen. This stuff is like, I don't know. I don't know how thick it is, but one of the drawbacks to Amazing Clearcast, I don't like how thick it is. Again, it's formulated to be a bar top epoxy though. So that's typical, you know, this, this is what you would find in typical bar top epoxies. When I say that, what that means is like to coat a bar top, like a tabletop. Um, you, you put kind of a thin layer on um, and that's kind of what I mean by bar top epoxy. There's lots of versions of that out there. The part B is a little bit thinner. So again, I'm going up to the 48 ounce line. As you can see, that's, that's a little bit thinner there. Much thicker than Alumilite Clear, for sure. I mean, like, way thicker. You're looking for an epoxy with kind of a, you know, that 30 to 40 minute working time that can, you know, handle pores that are, are medium sized. Liquid Diamonds is a good option. It's super thin, like almost water thin, like it's very similar to Alumilite Clear, the, the viscosity of it. Um, so that means it'll kind of flow nicely. It's a lot easier to mix, those kinds of things. That's looking good. And we're not going to mess around today. We are paddle mixing. Because <laughs> this stuff's already thick as it is. Let me go get a paddle mixer, some glasses, because I don't trust myself with a power tool and resin. You don't want this stuff in your eye. That is the, the last thing that you want ever. Let's see here. Where are my glasses? There they are. Huh. My other glasses. Okay. Oh, I lost my drill bit. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is keep this paddle down kind of on the bottom of the bucket there. I'm trying to scrape that and then I'm going to also use the paddle to kind of scrape the sides of the bucket. And as always, you know, right now you can kind of, hopefully you can kind of see it's, it's fairly cloudy. Uh, you're going to get air bubbles, you know, and this is, if you're going to do this, you're going to need to use a pressure pot, hands down. Um, if you want to try to avoid bubbles, you're going to have to, like, just use a stick and stir, like, super slow. I ain't got time for that. So we're going to mix it up. Uh, but once it's, you know, once you're getting to the point where it's, it's, it's mixed properly, um, it should kind of clear out. There's going to be a lot of little bubbles in there, you know, making, obscuring your view, but it should be much clearer. And then one thing I like to do, so I'm going to just try and clean the paddle off a little bit for a second. Um, one thing that I like to do, I'm going to try to get something underneath the gun. There we go. Look at that. I like to use this little silicone spatula paddle thing. 
and just make sure that I'm getting the edges all of the part A's and part B's off of there. Uh, you do not want to use WD-40 as a mold release. It will screw up your resin. My recommendation is to use a mold release um, that whatever resin manufacturer you know you bought, whatever they recommend. This is not a place to go cheap. Um, <laughs> you know, real mold releases don't cost that much. I mean, you're talking like 10, 10 bucks or something like that, maybe 15 at the most. Um, but if it screws up the resin, that was a lot of wasted money. So it's just best on that case to just go with something that's made for resin. Um, I use stoner and I find that for epoxy, and it says urethane, and you know, it's, it's formulated for alumilite clear, which is a urethane resin, but it works fine for epoxies as well, this purple can. Another good way to go is this universal mold release. That's what UMR stands for. This stuff you can use resin to resin, all right? You can use silicone to resin or silicone to silicone. So like literally you can use this for anything and it's not a bad, not a bad option. So I would recommend one of those. There's also um, stoner, uh, there's a couple other types of stoner brand. Um, actually, I have one here. This is what people will tell you to use for epoxy. I recommend not using it. It's just greasy and disgusting. Um, so I think that you're much better off going with either the, the urethane mold release version or the universal mold release. And there's other, you know, other resin manufacturers have different um, formulas or like brands, let's, let's just say. Um, so just use whatever they recommend and you'll trust me on this one. There's other things that you could probably get away with, but I just don't find that it's worth risking. Um, but if you're hellbent on it, then the, f the thing that you want to do is just do experiments. You know, try some out, see how it works. Did you get any kind of weird reaction? Did it do anything funky? And I probably wouldn't even put any colorant or anything like that. Just do clear resin. Oh, I had to sneeze. Turn, luckily, I'm, I turned the mic off so you guys didn't have to listen to that in your headphones. Um... I don't know what I was saying, but I lost my train of thought with the sneeze. Oh, there's other ones out there, but I don't know. If I, I don't think I would recommend it. I've never felt. Oh, uh, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna experiment with it, just just pour some clear in something that you've you know used coated, and see how it works. So I'm going to give this a couple more minutes of mixing. I think it's fine at this point. Um, I will say that it doesn't look a whole lot different than, I, than what I said before. So you're best to just, you know, err on the side of caution. You can't mix this too much, but you can under mix it. If you don't get everything mixed up well, uh, you can have some curing issues. So we'll just give this a little bit more time. All right, I think that's probably pretty good. I'm just gonna let this drip into my trash can over there until it sets up. All right, so we need 
Let's see, we got Daryl and Jeff have super chatted. So what colors do you guys want? Hopefully they're both here. Daryl and Jeff, give me some colors that you want to see. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here is I'll just break this into... I'm going to kind of wait and see what colors we get here. If anybody wants to super chat, you can get in on the colors, but you got to do it before um, I've, I've started mixing colors, <laughs> basically. I'm going to zero my scale out at this point. Um, what we can do is either just go with a two-color pour, um, and then so we'll just kind of basically split that 540 grams in two, uh, so it'll be two cups, or... I, the other thing we could do is maybe a three cup pour. I don't think I want to do much more than three colors on this one. Um, just it, things can get a little bit. I, I want to make sure that we have a pretty good experiment, you know, um, see what those colors do. I'm just going to wipe off this stir stick real quick with some acetone. Dean Martin. <laughs> Jeff's going with royal blue. That's a good one. How about this dark ocean blue? Is that royal enough? I have a slightly darker, that's an eye candy, um, eye candy pigment one. I have one called Nocon blue, which is darker. Where the heck did that go? Huh. Here it is. A little bit more royalish, maybe. Definitely darker. Hold these both up. Let me know, darker or lighter? And Daryl. Hopefully Daryl's still here. That doesn't seem to want to go on there. Must be for this one. Yep. That's weird. Those look like this. Oh, those aren't the same jar. Huh. Interesting. Ocean blue. All right. Dark ocean blue is the name of this one. Whoops. Camera bounce. Dark ocean blue. I'm, I'm, it sucks because this, this camera setup is perfect, but <laughs> every time I open a drawer, it bounces. Yeah, I really like Nocon too. That's a good one. I like Dark Ocean though too. I use it in a lot of the blanks that I make. All right, so just waiting on Daryl. Daryl might have left. And actually, you know, if you really want to get a good experiment, I maybe should have thought of this earlier, but I kind of like the, the pearls. Um, they always look good. But uh, if you really want to see bleeding going on and stuff like that, color bleed, then dyes, um, I find, are worse uh, than, than your mica powders. Just a little bit harder to kind of keep um, separated, especially blue and yellow, purple and yellow, sometimes orange and blue. Um, those kind of blues and, and like the yellow, your yellows, red's fine for some reason. And these are like the Illumilite dyes. Um, I don't really find, I actually find the divine pigments stay separated a little bit more. And I'm actually wondering if it's because they have larger color chunks. Um, they're, they're, you know, pigment based, whereas these transparent tints, they're like a super, super fine particle of, of uh, color basically in there, in the medium. And then these things are big chunks of color. And I'm wondering if that's why these things tend to stay. I mean, you can still bleed the colors, but they, they tend to stay a little bit more separated. I'm kind of curious about that. All right, so I think we're going to have to pick. Let's have Philip pick another color. 
because I don't think Daryl's still here. And Philip uh, Phillips uh, got got an injury, so we'll, we'll let him pick one. Pick another color. We're gonna do a two color pour. Let me get my little book out here. We'll take some notes. Uh, I think we're gonna. Uh, I think we can. It is eleven twelve. Oh my gosh. January's speeding by already. Number one, we're doing. All right. And so we're going to do. We're going to do, let's see here. So we got no con of a bright green. Oh, I got lots of bright greens. I got spring green from uh, P town. I got apple green from Perlex. Um, I think I got lime green from caster's choice. I've got this, the emerald green from uh, eye candy. So I'll let you pick one of those guys. We're doing ocean blue, dark ocean blue. We're going to put a teaspoon in there. And then we're going to use green. The other one. So I'm going to start pouring. I'm going to put these greens aside for now. We're going to start pouring in. It's a big bucket, so I got to kind of pick this thing up and. You guys see? Yeah, you can kind of see. So I'm just picking this up. We need. Let me grab a little rag thing so I don't get resin everywhere. So 270. Oh, went a little bit over. Not a big deal. Closer to 280 here. That'll be okay. Two seventy and two seventy. We can do about two sixty in this one this time. So again, how do I, if, if you leave this stuff in a bucket for like ever, you know, like in a big, big lump like the, oh, I went way over again. I get for talking. So if I, if I were to leave this just a big lump, you know, the big vat of resin in this bucket, it would most likely heat up a lot faster. So what I want to do is we're actually going to get that second round ready right now all right so i'm gonna dump out <clears throat> we'll do three colors well let's just do two and two we'll, we'll do both the same maybe even we'll do the same colors actually um, just to kind of give this ex little experiment a good good foundation let's say hopefully i have enough resin here i think i do Uh, but if, if you dump these things out into smaller cups, then it's not going to accelerate as much. Um, larger, you know, volumes, quantity of resin kind of hanging out all together all at once um, is going to heat up faster than smaller amounts. And another kind of little caveat to that is, and I don't exactly know how this fits, fit, how, how this would fit together in this scenario, but 
I think if we would have left that whole 48 ounces of resin in this bucket, that should be, that should heat up the fastest. It's, it's quite a bit of resin and this stuff is really not meant to be sitting around in like a really thick amount, you know, we kind of talked about that. However, the other thing is if you have a big bucket, but it's not filled too high, that's probably going to stay cooler than, than these cups where it's kind of a big, it's a, it's a good amount, but it's not spread. It's not like a huge volume, but it, it's all kind of bulked together. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how this all goes. <clears throat> and I got a little bit left. So let's see, what do I want to do with it? I think I'm going to just pour a pipe. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. All right, so I can deal with this in a minute. We'll put this bucket over here. What green did we want? go apple okay we're gonna do a teaspoon of each one of these guys and we're gonna pour this right away and see how this goes um, now the one other thing about this resin specifically like compared to like liquid diamonds or um, deep pour or alumilite clear is it's thicker it's a thicker viscosity resin right so I don't know how that factors in because that's part of the deal with, you know, waiting on the resin um, to, to get to the end of the working time. So I'm not sure exactly how, how all these things fit together. Um, but part of it, part of the reason that you're waiting is because you want to, uh, let me get the half teaspoon. You want to be closer to the point where it's going to turn into a solid. So it's just locked in at that point. So here's half teaspoon. And another half. Oh. I think. I really should have started. I, I wanted to uh, set a timer. Kind of keep an eye on um, when to pour. I'm going to be looking at the temperature. I think that we could probably go to a pretty high temperature, but I've been, I kind of played around a little bit with Amazing Clearcast Plus, and I don't know if it's different than Amazing Clearcast Regular, but it seemed like you could probably get away with pouring at a much lower temperature than I expected. Um, with Liquid Diamonds, I actually have done some stuff with that, and that's usually, you're, you're waiting till like 120, 130, I think is, is a, I think that's a decent range with liquid diamonds for color swirl blanks. Um, and I think that Jake even did a little experiment with that stuff too. So he might have a video that shows, um, some more stuff with liquid diamonds, but, um, I haven't really seen anybody do experiments with amazing clearcast or clearcast plus for color swirl time or temperature. Um, but I'm thinking, I don't know. I'm going to keep an eye on the temperature of those cups over there. We might pour at around 90 and just see how things work out. So that's a pretty nice looking cup of green. Green and blue. It's funny, somebody was just asking me about nautical themed, like a kind of a nautical themed pen blank. These would probably do pretty decent. Ocean blue, I mean, there you go. Oh, Daryl, is Daryl here? Oh no, there he is, sea green. Well, we're going with sea, it's a kind of a sea green. <laughs> Sorry, missed ya. All right, so that's good. 
And at this point, we're just gonna pour it. We're not waiting around. This is an experiment, just so, for anybody that's just joining the fun here. What we're doing is we're using a, a longer working time resin and we're gonna experiment. This is, so this is amazing clear cast from Illumilite, not plus. I don't know if it really makes a huge difference. Um, I think they're very similar, but amazing clear cast. All right, the regular version. Um, and just one thing to note, if you're gonna dump, if, if you're gonna use if you're looking to buy like amazing, if, if you're looking to choose between amazing clear cast and amazing clear cast plus, if you're going to be dumping a bunch of mica in, then there's really no reason to get the plus version. It just costs more. Um, but if you're using it for clear things that you don't want to yellow, then that's why you would pick the amazing clear cast plus. But if most of what you're going to be doing is just this type of thing, then I, I don't, I would save your money, you know. Um, but what we're doing is kind of experimenting. We mixed a huge bucket of resin of this amazing clear cast. And it, it was old resin, but I did do a test. Um, and it hardened fine. Everything looks good uh, on this test. So I think it's fine. It should be usable. And we mixed a big bucket of resin up. And we're going to do some experiments. Um, we're going to pour right away and just see how, you know, the colors bleed, basically. And we're going to keep these guys ready. We're going to put the same colors in. We're going to give them, you know, about 30 minutes or so, and then we're going to pour them and see if we get a better separation, if there's any difference. All right, so are you guys ready for a little bit of pouring magic? Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to lift this just a bit. There. There you go. Now again, one of the nice things about this is it's kind of thicker. You know, it's already thick. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how much bleed we get. I think it's gonna look pretty good off the bat, but I think over time, I think this is gonna turn into kind of a big soup of, the, of, of like a blue and green. I think it's gonna bleed more like over time, but I don't know, I honestly, I. I I really don't, don't like the, how thick this stuff is. Um, and so I just really never use Amazing Clearcast for like, like color swirl. And I don't like waiting. Uh, you know, so I don't really use long working time resins for color swirl applications typically. But this will be kind of fun to see how it goes. I mean, it's not really bleeding. A whole lot right now doesn't look like <clears throat> I'm going to kind of pour these the way that I would typically pour you know my blanks and I'm also going to give it a like a swirl at the end Uh, with you know with a mixing stick Jake has one of the things that I love about Jake's blank or I mean Jake's molds is he has little fill lines I mean that is honestly that is that is it's tiny creature comfort but it is so huge, like it's so awesome. So I really appreciate Jake's attention to detail on these things. Plus they just look great. If you're in the market for some silicone molds, make sure to head to northsidecustomcrafts.com and pick some up. He's got some really awesome, awesome molds, awesome ideas. He's not just making another thing, he's like solving problems with these things, so. Always a good time with Jake. You don't mess around, you know? All right, so we're getting close to that fill line now. 
see a lot of people pour like that where they do all these like kind of thin round uh, circle kind of pours this I don't know I don't know if that does anything it's not how I usually do it I usually just kind of do these little swirly things all right we're getting close to the the fill line there There we go. Made a royal. Me oh man, I knocked my my paddle mixer in there. In a royal mess, but everything looks pretty good. Oh, I threw my stick away. Uh, I still got one. Oh, sort of. There we go. So I just kind of go in and give it a little bit of a swirl. So this stuff's thicker and it kind of operates a little bit differently than some of the other resins out there. Thin ones definitely will bleed. They'll, they'll start bleeding like the minute you pour it in. This is staying pretty separated. I'm actually kind of surprised about this. Kind of crazy. All right, so I'm gonna use my little um, P-Town Subby mold rack. We're going to get this guy in the pressure pot right away. What's the temperature that we're at right now? That's a question I'm curious about. About 91. Let me I'm going to kind of mix these up a little bit. I just want to see where we're at here. 87. Heck, we might have just waited long enough. That's what I get for blabbing. Talking the whole time. <clears throat> Alright, so we got these guys, and I'm going to keep my eyes on this stuff. I mean, it's already... It's not like it's super warm or anything like that. That's at 87. I think that we can probably wait till like, I don't know, 95. Let's just kind of see what happens if you just wait till 95 like you do with um, Alumilite Clear. <clears throat> All right, so let me scroll down and see. Um, Liquid Diamonds, you want to get that at Turner's Warehouse. No, nobody else sells that that I know of. Fresh bread, oh man. Yeah, I like those two colors too. Those are, that was a good one. The fun, no, no joke, the, the funny thing is that those blanks, I don't know, you know, with the color separation and all that stuff, but um, somebody literally just, just emailed me and was like, hey, do you have a, a, a nauti I'm doing a nautical pen, you know, like the nautical kit. Do you have like a, a nautical theme or an ocean theme kind of blank? And I have one that's pretty good called Aqua, but it's just like, like blue. Um, and so, but he showed me a picture and he's like, I don't know where I got this blank. And like, it looked exactly like that one. So now I'm like, oh yeah, I got, I got you covered, buddy. <clears throat> oh, I'm still just mad at myself for unplugging the 3d printer. It's not like it was a big deal. It still had like, like seven hours to go. So it's not like, you know, going to make any difference. Yeah, Amazing Clearcast is pretty cheap. Um, Liquid Diamond is about the same price as uh, Lumilite Clear. Um, I don't know where Total Boat falls on the line of... Uh, yeah, it's kind of Starry Night, huh? Um, 
I don't know where Total Boat falls on the, the price range. I've never bought it. I've never used it before. Um, so maybe, is there anybody who's dug in here? I don't know how. he. I, I know he's used Alumalite as well as Total Boat. I don't know if he's still here or not, though. So let me put a fresh pair of gloves on. Is there anything else going on? We got our mold warming in the oven here. It's going to be ready. Um, so let me get gloves on. What I want to do is we're going to check the temperature of this. I wish I would have timed, set a timer on that. I don't know how long, let's see, how long have we been... Ah, Doug had to leave. Well, we'll never know then. All right, so I think what I want to do is mix up some of the deep pour. That's not deep pour. That's not either. Where's the deep pour? Um, because this stuff definitely, uh, I, this will, this should bleed a lot. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a, an example of, of a, you know, a nice ripping color bleed. Um, deep pour has a two hour working time. All right. So like, I don't care how long we wait. <laughs> I'm going to be at home before this stuff starts setting up basically. Um, so we'll give this a shot, see what we're doing. I, I think I got time to, I mean, I don't think this stuff is really setting up. It's not particularly warm. I don't know, most epoxies get pretty warm. So we're just gonna keep these sitting there. Um, we're gonna mix up some, some deep pour real quick, get it ready, and then maybe kind of go back and pour the other round of those things. So we need, I don't know, we'll do the, um, we'll do the deep pour in the single blanks from Jake Blanks. I have no clue how much those take, but it's gotta be pretty close to five, 500, 540. grams which is like yeah so 500 i'm just going to mix up 550 so it'll be 225 times two or let's just mix up 600 that's fine because the math is easier on this cup I'm gonna erase some lines nice thing about paint mixing cups you can just if you mark on it you can just use some acetone and it comes right off and I just write these lines on here just to know where I'm going because there's a lot of things happening on a mixing cup. That's not the right camera. All right, so we're gonna do 300. And oh, actually, this is a two to one. Shoot. Two parts. Two parts what? Uh, Hmm. Well, that doesn't help me. It just says two to one. I don't, for some reason, I think we had to waste some of the part, whatever the, the, the part that has more. So usually I would have, you would have two different size bottles or two bottles of one thing and one of the other. And uh, yeah, so. Unfortunately, that's not what I have. Let me see if I can get the instructions. Looking up the instructions for the deep pour. Oh, it looks like two part A. Two parts part A. Let me write that on here. All right, two parts, part A to one part, part B. So now we have to kind of change things here. Two to one. 
I have no I've never used these things before. They're so weird. No, I don't even know what's happening with these things. So we're gonna go two two hundred of part B and four hundred of part A. All right, so no. Four hundred and six hundred. All right, so four hundred grams of part A, or four hundred liters, I should say. This is by volume, right? Always read the instructions. Is it by volume? Is it by by weight? Make sure you you know what you're doing and what the the proper parts are. Okay, so we're going to this four hundred line. Just a tad more. There we go. So this has a working time of two to four hours. And <clears throat> a demold time of like, I don't even know, like, well, it says like tack free time, 24 to 72 hours. That's a little bit more of a, of, of a uh, you know, when you're doing like a river table, the, the tack free time. A little bit different than like a demold time for casting, but generally you're going to want to kind of wait for most things like 20, good 24 hours. Like, and I'm not talking like overnight, I'm talking 24 hours. There we go. Now this stuff, frankly, I don't know, you know, we didn't do a test. This is pretty old too. I don't think it's as old as that amazing clear cast was, but fairly old. I don't know technically if it's going to work. As you can see, this stuff is a lot thinner viscosity than that amazing clear cast. I'm going to get this mixed up and then check our temperature on the first ones. See where we're at. Hey, Richard, you made it. We were just, I was just talking about you, man. We just made some blanks that look exactly like that one that you wanted to replace. Um, yeah, it hasn't been snowboarding. Um, I, this, this last year, um, I was working on some, I had some back and knee issues, and so I, I've been working on very hard, work, working on, uh, I decided it would probably be smart to lose weight, that's never going to, you know, hurt your back, um, so I did kind of shore up the diet a little bit, not that much, and then I were, I've been kind of doing, like, I would actually kind of call it more of like a physical therapy type of thing, but working out pretty, pretty regularly, three or four times a week. I lost probably, I don't know, I was up at like 215, 220, and I'm down to like one, I kind of, well, after Christmas, I was back up to like 190. I was joking with my wife, I haven't been 190 since before I was born. I think I was born at 185 <laughs> or something. So, I haven't been under 200 for a long time. There's some chunks in here. Doesn't look very good. I don't know. I don't know if this was in the cut before or if it was in the jug of resin, but we'll take that out. So I'm actually going to set that aside for a second. I want to mix that some more, but I want to see where are we at. This stuff is okay. This stuff is starting to thick. Well, it's kind of hard to tell, I guess, because that stuff was so much thinner, but it's warm. So we're at 102. I think we should pour this. I don't know what the right temperature is for this one. Excuse me. Didn't have time to mute that. Sorry, guys. This stuff seems like it's, I mean, I don't know. It's still pretty thin. Hard to tell with this stuff. 
Um, with the Lumilite Clear, you're like, okay, this stuff is like thickening. We got to get going. Uh, with Amazing Clear Cast, I'm going to put this aside for just a few more seconds here. We're gonna we're gonna maybe go up to like one. The tough thing about doing these this type of an experiment is I don't know when this is going to start, you know, really setting up. But my gut tells me that we really want to be waiting to like 120, 130. So let's just wait to like one. Let's push it to 120 and see what happens. I'll try to keep my eyes on it a little bit closer than, but we got a ways to go. So I'm going to mix this one up. Oh man, injuries are the worst. I hate being injured and I hate being sick. I mean, I just, I hate it. I can't stand it. I think the worst time of my life, you know, like the worst thing that ever happened to me was I, I had to get surgery. Well, I, I tore my ACL and I had to get surgery on it. And after that surgery for, I mean, I was like bedridden for like two weeks. I want to say, I don't know. It felt like a month. It was horrible though. You're just sitting there. You can't do anything. Oh, that's actually, uh, my, my sister got me the, the Harry Potter book one, maybe book two. Um, and that's when I read those books. That's why I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. Cause those are the only things that like got me through being in pain in bed. Can't do anything. You know, can't get out of bed and do anything. That was horrible. So I, I feel for you. I don't like it when people are sick or injured. It's just no fun. All right, so let me just look at this again. I think this stuff is mixed up. But again, we're going to get a good experiment with this deep pour no matter what because it's got two-hour working time, and I ain't staying here till the end of that. It's going to be super thin for a long, long time. Let's see where we're at here, 105.5 or so. Let's see what this one says. It should be the same. Pretty close. Oh, I dropped something in there. Let's mix our stuff in. I, I forgot to mix the, the powders in. So we're going with the same colors again as that first batch uh, because I just want to see... I want to compare, you know, compare the two. Okay, so we're going to put the same amount of powder in again. So one teaspoon. This is a half teaspoon thing, measuring spoon. Doesn't really matter, I don't think, in this case. But I'll try to be scientific-ish about this. That sounds like a t-shirt we should make, scientific-ish. Okay, got our powder in, let's mix that in there. And he goes back. This stuff's actually thinning out a little bit, feels like, which will happen a lot of times. Well, it's funny because at room temperature, you know, liquids generally, the warmer the temperature, the, the thinner viscosity you get. Um, but in the case of Illumilite Clear Slow, it actually, it starts warming up and then it starts getting actually thicker. So this is kind of an opposite effect here. Tells me that I think we're on the right track. Do you think we need to wait a little bit longer? All right. I forgot to put the double cam up, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pause real quick. I'm gonna mute. That way you didn't have to listen to me blow my nose. <laughs>
runny nose. Oh, that's not the right camera. That's not the right one. Here we go. Okay. What's the temperature now, guys? What do you think it is? One oh nine. No, it's gonna bleed when it's earlier on. Yeah, I like this green. This is the apple green from uh, Perlex. Um, it's out of all the like lime green kind of colors because it's similar to like Caster's Choice lime green. But this stuff, you, there is no amount that you can add that's going to really cover up a, a tube, you know, the, the brass. This stuff's not too bad. Like it's the most like opaque light green uh, mica powder that, that I know of. So I've been pretty happy with that one. And I love this blue, so we're doing pretty good here. We're, we're making some nice looking blinks. I'm kind of curious what the temperature is of this resin in this bucket here. But you can see, I mean, this stuff is way less viscous than, than it was. So the surface says that that's like only 88 degrees. Are we zoomed way in again? Zoomed in. Kind of odd. Again, what I want to do is wait till about 120 before we pour this. We're at 116. Might even be able to go till like 130 on this. I don't know. Tough call. It's a tough call. We're going to do a three cup pour with the deep pour stuff. We got 600, so we're going to put 200 grams in each one of these guys. So I'm just waiting on these other ones for now. I think we might even try to wait till like 130, see what happens. Maybe you should just split the difference, 125. I'm going to go 200. All I'm doing is splitting this stuff into like thirds. The deep pour. Okay, two oh, and a little over. No big deal. Two, three, I'm just doing this while we wait so we're ready for action. I'm gonna move these out of the way so that I don't knock them over while we're, <laughs> we're working with these things. Again, it's still looking fine to me. Let's see what the temperature is here. 124, so thinking we should maybe start pouring this. I don't know, I think, I mean, I think we can wait till 130. The one thing that you gotta kinda think about when you're, when you're choosing these numbers or, or thinking about the number is you, you got to also account for the fact that you're going to be pouring, you know, if you're doing color swirls and you're doing all these multiple layers, like that's going to take some time. So you want to make sure that you're not starting too late to where it's going to kind of start setting up in the middle. I think we could probably go close to now. Starting to get thicker. It feels like it's thickening back up. So I think we should go 124, 25. I'm going to call that about what, what number uh, we're pouring at.
And I'm not gonna mess around this time. I'm not gonna pour like super thin things. I'm gonna pour kind of a larger amount per pass, I think. Slightly larger. And this stuff, it feels like it's wanting to kind of start setting up on me. Starting to get kind of thick. I'm kind of going a little faster than I was messing around with those other ones. Oh yeah, it's starting to definitely get thicker. Okay. Do kind of the same swirl method. I'm gonna do a little bit of a back up and through. Look at that. That looks pretty. Okay. And into the pressure pot we go, man. I'll tell you what, I think that 120, 120, 125, that might be the sweet spot with this ACC. I don't know. It seemed like it went pretty, pretty darn well. Seemed about the right length of time, you know, it was starting to really get kind of gooey at the end there. I'm very curious to see how these things turn out and compare each batch to each other. All right, what do you guys think about that? I know, that color already does make me smile too. Uh, Perlex makes, yeah, they make a copper. They got pretty much every color. Black and gold with flex. Caribbean island blanks. That's a good idea. I don't have the temp right now. Sorry about that. All right. So for this last thing, what we're going to do, we have those three cups of deep pour. We're going to just pour it into, this is another one of the Jake blanks molds that he sent me. Um, these are singles. Um, so we're going to use this mold. Uh, but the deep pour is a thinner viscosity resin and two hour working time. Obviously, we're not going to wait around for it to get to the point where um, you could start pouring it. One of the one of the big problems I would say with um, using deep pour. So, you know, with the Lumalite clear slow, you have 12 minutes of working time right now. That window of kind of what I call the gel period where, you know, the resin starts kind of heating up, heating up and then you get to 95 degrees Fahrenheit for me is usually about the minimum um, temperature that you want to wait. That's, that's, that's starting to get to the sweet spot. It kind of can change, but I mean, when it's about 70 degrees in the shop, 95 degrees to 100 uh, Fahrenheit with, a, uh, with Alumalite Clear Slow, and I think it's the same for Alumalite Clear as well, just the regular one, um, there's not a lot of time between when it hits 95 and when it's hard as a rock, right? Like it's a very short gel period where it starts to kind of get to this gel period where you're ready to do color swirls without it bleeding much. And then when it's like hard, where this stuff, you know, that we just did the 30 minute 
you know, you can wait till it's 120 or, you know, whatever the magic number is, but you kind of have a longer gel period time. I mean, it, it well, let's just say, I don't know off the top of my head, but I mean, I'm just kind of thinking like, you know, you might have like three to four minutes or something like that with Illumilite Clear Slow, whereas you might have like 10 minutes possibly. I mean, it was getting thick, but it's not like it was going to like harden anytime soon, right? Now with deep pour, and I haven't experimented with this because frankly, I don't have the patience to wait two hours before pouring, but I have a feeling that that gel period is going to be even longer with that stuff. Like you can wait and wait and wait, and it's going to be kind of a, a weird thing, which may be easier. Um, you may have a, a much wider window of when you could pour and not get bleeding. I don't know if that's the case. Um, but the other thing is it's also going to wait much longer. Like if you, you know, started pouring, um, like at the very beginning of that kind of gel period window, um, it's going to have a lot more time to kind of sit there and, and possibly move around and do stuff before it really solidly locks in place. That's one of the things that I like about Illumilite Clear Slow is for, for doing color swirls and, and these types of things, I think it's the way to go because you only have such a small window so you can kind of get things going and then it kind of just like locks in place like pretty quick. So I don't know, depending on your outlook and, and, and what's going on, you can kind of use that knowledge to your own advantage, you know, whether it's better or worse to have, you know, a longer gel period or a shorter one. Um, I kind of prefer um, that shorter gel period just because it seems like things kind of lock in place a little easier. But we'll have to see with this amazing clear cast that might not be... It, it, we, we may get good results on both batches. I don't know. Um, so let's, uh, let's get these deep pour cups going. We're going to use dyes. Uh, no, we're going to, never mind. We're not going to use dyes. We're going to use, um, maybe we'll add a little bit of dye. We'll do the same color combination. We'll do the green and the blue, and then we'll add like white. I don't know, you know, to it. And we'll just kind of see how, well, white's, white is going to, let's not do that. Oops things. Let me think about this. What did we do for the Caribbean color? Yeah, I, I started, I, we're estimating it was about 125 Fahrenheit is when I started to pour. What's the Caribbean color? yellow let's do that let's add a little bit of like gold kind of one of the the goldish colors all right so man we're getting a workout with these this dark ocean blue apple green and then let's go with the right color let's go with canary yellow let's do this canary yellow i think that's a good good oh <laughs> Put it on the right camera. Let's do that. What do you think of that? I think that's going to be a good one. Let's do canary yellow. Okay, so we're going to do, let's see, we've split it in three. I don't think it matters. We're going to do another teaspoon in each. Um, how much you put in, I don't, you know, we got three cups this time. I don't think it's going to make much difference because this stuff is going to be so thin. I don't think it's necessarily going to matter what we do here. I think it's going to all kind of bleed. Maybe it'll surprise me. I don't know. You know, I'm not like all knowing here. Based on my experience though. That's a good yellow. Canary yellow. Canary yellow from uh, P-Town Subby. Uh, I'm digging this. <clears throat> okay, and our green. And we're going to pour this right away, all right? We're not waiting around, like I said. I think I mentioned that a few times now. But I think that immediately we're going to see this stuff kind of bleed a bit. I think it's going to be pretty obvious right off the bat. Canary is what you use. Nice. <laughs> Canary is a good, that's a nice yellow. Okay, so let's get a couple sticks. Boom, boom, 
boom. Let's get on the double cam. We're gonna double down on this one. That way you can kind of see what I'm doing up in the corner there. Mix this in. I I really I'm actually a pretty big fan of this deep pour stuff. Um, again, not for color swirl. Um, you know, if I was doing multiple colors, but uh, it works pretty well if you're doing like a single color. And I don't care what size your mold is, it 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 sets pretty well. Um, so I made some dice. I don't know if these were, were the ones or not, but I have made dice. So, I mean, this mold is tiny, you know, compared to what we're, we're pouring pen blank bricks. This is like a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of resin. And deep pour will harden up quite nicely. Um, you just have to give it like a week, you know, so like let it sit there. But it'll harden up, and I mean, you can even pour things as small as dice with that stuff. So it's kind of a cool resin, um, and like I said, I like that low viscosity. The, the, the drawback is, you know, there's a long waiting time before, you know, you can like really, in some cases, even take them out of the molds. Like you, you would want to leave those dice in there for, you know, in the molds for like, I would recommend like at least five days. But you can get away with it like it'll work right pretty cool stuff and the beauty of that is you have like a super slow setting resin i mean like you have plenty of time to get all the bubbles out they will all be out of that stuff so that that's not really a bad resin to use if you're going for no bubbles now not for you know color swirls i don't think though i don't think that would be the best option necessarily because of that long two hour working time Liquid Diamonds is a pretty decent one because of its thin viscosity. Um, it's it just it's easy to get the bubbles out. Amazing Clearcast. It has a working time that's longer, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not really the greatest no pressure pot resin unless you're doing very thin layers that you can use a, like a torch on. Um, because it's so thick, the bubbles don't really come out. If you got kind of a thick brick of stuff, I don't know. Not my first choice for no pressure pot, really. What do you guys think of these colors? Yeah, bleeding can be okay, but a lot of times I, I'm I'm more I think I'm a little bit more um, I, I'm less worried when you're using micas. Um, and this is again this is one of those reasons why I tell beginners to just skip the dyes, <laughs> like if this is your first you know you're buying your first you know batch of resin don't mess with dyes just go get you some pretty colors in in mica because there's almost no combination that's going to look bad together and even if it does bleed typically i mean it's not even going to be that bad because you can kind of get some nice looking bleeding going on whereas dyes in some cases they will just look terrible if they if they bleed so Anyway, I think we're just going to go ahead and pour this stuff. We're not, like I said, there's no amount of time that we can wait tonight where it's going to change anything. It's not, you know, the temperature is going to stay the same for hours, basically. So I'm just going to take the temperature of this stuff, but it's 72.5. I mean, that's pretty much what it is in the shop, you know. So let's pull our mold out. And again, this is a Jake's Blanks. J I always say Jake's. I always say multiple, but they are. It's Jake's blanks. Jake blanks mold. Thank you, Jake, for sending that in. Appreciate it. And let's see what we get with these guys.
So, you know, these look pretty good right now. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, just looking in here and, and there's nothing really bad about these. The problem is going to come with the hours that this is going to sit and be in a, in a very thin, you know, viscosity liquid state. I've just, I've seen, you know, and, and it's the same thing with river tables. Like, frankly, I don't really know. You don't see too many color swirl river tables. Like, I haven't seen like any. Um, and I think it's because, you know, you really, the whole point is you want to pour this stuff and let it be in this very thin viscosity liquid state for quite a while, you know? Um, but what ends up happening is while it's sitting there, the micas and the resin and, and things just kind of keep moving. And a lot of times that's when you get that bleeding going on. It's just, it, it, there's no way around it. And you need to pour early and you want, you know, no bubbles. And there's all these things going on with it that, uh, that you kind of need, but I don't know that there's a good way to not have these things bleed. But like I said, these look pretty awesome right now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy with this. I don't know where the fill line is on this. I couldn't see it. There might not have been one on this one. So we're just going to kind of fill these up and see what's going on. Got a little bit more green. Okay. A little bit more blue to this one. All right, we're gonna call that good. Now I need to put this on a on a hard. You don't want to put a silicone mold in your pressure pot directly um, because when you pressurize it, it's gonna follow the curve of the pot on the bottom. And even though I have uh, the CA Technologies pots are pretty flat on the bottom, but you're going to end up with banana blanks, I call them. It's going to be curved because that pressure, it's going to kind of force the, the, you know, push it down and make that, that mold conform to what's underneath it. So let's get this guy out here. We got another one. Got a lot of resin on the edges, but I think we'll be okay, possibly. Maybe shouldn't have filled this so far. I'm gonna be kind of careful here. Oh, I spilled it. We'll be okay, I think, though. All right. Hopefully, I won't spill it anymore. Oh, flipped the edge. Probably spilled some more. All right, got it in there. Um, and with that one, we could probably leave it out and it would be okay, you know? But let's just give it the benefit of the doubt and give it the same treatment as the amazing clear cast blanks. I don't know if pressure would have any effect on moving the mica powders around like I was kind of talking about either. So I don't know if, you know, pressure versus no pressure, if you'd get different results. I don't think you would, but I don't know. For sure. All right, so. Yeah, you like that color? Nice. Pray to the curing gods. <laughs> yep. I think everything will be pretty good. So now, uh, one thing to keep in mind, the deep pour, like you'd have to keep that, I would recommend keeping that under pressure for like 24 hours. Um, you don't want to um, pull that out before then because what ends up happening, for anybody that doesn't understand like or, or know, you know what the deal is with this pressure pot thing, what's happening is the pressure, you put it under pressure and it collapses air bubbles. Um, it, it shrinks them basically. Um, same happens with vacuum, but the opposite way. Vacuum is going to make them expand. 
All right, so the pressure pot's great because you put it under pressure and immediately those bu bubbles collapse. But like in this case, with the deep pour, let's say we just waited five hours or something like that. Now we're, we're past the working time, but it isn't set up. It's gonna be very like rubbery. If we took the pressure off, then all those air bubbles are gonna re-expand or you know, expand from, from their smaller size into what they were at least, if not you know, kind of grow bigger. And so you're gonna have this messed up blank. That's what would happen. So the demold time um, is important in that case. You don't wanna pull things out of the pressure pot too early or else those bubbles are just gonna come right back if it hasn't turned to a fully solid material. So I'm gonna leave that in there. The nice thing is tomorrow's my day off. So I will not even be coming in that thing's gonna stay there. Um, these guys will also, so everything will be under pressure this whole time and we'll have to kind of see how these things work out. But I'm pretty excited to see what the results are on these. Um, I haven't really done, I've never done that before. Definitely not with Amazing Clearcast. So it'll be kind of cool to see what happens with, that, with those things. So let me stop real quick and see. Uh, here knives oh well I'm, I'm glad that i can help out that's that's kind of the whole point when i got into it it was it seemed like everybody in the the pen blank making community i didn't know you know knife makers um let me look at i want to look at something real quick so this yeah this stuff still hasn't set up this is that extra i don't want to mess with it right now um, but it still hasn't set up so that'll give you an idea of like kind of the gel period now this was not as hot as those cups, though. It was, I would say, significantly um, lower, but um, kind of curious what this thing is reading now. 112. So, yeah, so this isn't really, this is actually getting to the point where it seemed like with the Amazing Clearcast, it started to actually get thinner viscosity when it hit like 105 to 110, and then it started thickening back up when it hit like 120. So it's kind of an interesting thing. And it, you know, th this is the thing, a lot of people say, which resin should I use or, or whatever. And a lot of times I'm like, just pick one and stick with it because it will make things a lot easier um, to, to really understand one. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes when you're dealing with highly different resins that you don't know, you know exactly how they work. Um, you, you need to give each one time to understand. Um, I think the easiest things where you can kind of bounce around, um, the easiest things where, where you can move from one resin to, the, to, to another is if you're just going for dead clear or, you know, one color or something like that, like that's easy to just, you know, mix it up and pour it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But when you're trying to do very specific things, keep colors separated and understand what the, you know, viscosity and the, the temperature that you need, it gets really tough to know, you know, for every different resin and every different temperature in your shop and situation, uh, size, pour, it, it makes it kind of difficult to really nail down those types of things. It's much easier just to pour clear over something else a lot of times at that point. So, uh, you don't, you can't use a pressure pot as they are. Um, I would recommend just go get a vacuum chamber um, set up uh, for, for a vacuum. And frankly, for casting resins, I don't, I don't recommend using vacuum at all. Um, it's just, it's, it's pressure works instantaneously to collapse bubbles. That's not how it is with vacuum. It takes a while. Um, and the other issue is a lot of resins have chemicals in them that will boil under vacuum. <laughs> so it's just a mess. So what ends up happening is when those bubbles expand, it's foaming basically it, it, it literally is going to make your resin kind of foam up so it's gonna it's it's just a mess and i don't recommend it there are a few people that do use vacuum um, for very specific things but the majority of resin casters will just stay away from it pressure is the way to go for resin vacuum's good for degassing silicones and for stabilizing wood um, using you know used with cactus juice wood stabilizing resin Yeah, part of the problem, I mean, you can use the chamber, but you need a different lid to create a, a vacuum chamber. Um, you want to be able to see in when you're doing vacuum, typically, because <laughs> it starts bubbling over and stuff. Like, even when you're doing degassing silicone, if you tried to fill up the cup with silicone and then degas it, it's just going to overflow. 
So it just, it doesn't work well with resins uh, for, for most things. I would stay away from it completely. I did, I've done an experiment, and, and I'm not the only person that says this. Every single person that's done an experiment, resin, you know, uh, vacuum versus, uh, versus pressure for resin casting, everybody's like, oh, this was just horrible, you know. Unless you want, like, a, a spongy effect or something like that, um, you cannot, you, you could get away with um, vacuum probably with deep pour. That would probably work. Um, one of the biggest problems, like people ask me, especially for Illumilite Clear, there is just not enough time. Um, you will not get it vacuum degassed in enough time before the resin literally is solid. So, I mean, it can take 20 to 30 minutes, right? And so even with a 30 minute working time resin, eh, it's getting kind of close, you know. The two hours, you can probably do that, but I just, I don't see the point really. So anyway... Oh yeah, I, I was kind of scared when I got my first pressure pot. Like, I literally like, you know, turned the vat, the air on and like ran away and hid behind something. But here's the thing: I've been using these, and I stand right next to them for eight years at this point. I I just don't think they're that dangerous. Where pressure pots become dangerous is when you're not using them. Um, according to the specifications that they tell you. So, you know, as long as you don't exceed the working, the maximum working pressure of your pressure pot, you should be fine. Um, you know, the only way for something to happen is if some me mechanical failure happens. And even with Harbor Freight pots, those are about the cheapest pressure pots on the planet. I don't like them. I don't recommend people use them necessarily just because they have like little tiny screws and they're just, they're just kind of junk. But I don't know anybody that has a Harbor Freight pressure pot that uses it within its limitations, doesn't over, you know, doesn't exceed the, the working pressure uh, maximum. I don't know anybody that's had a problem with them. The only people that, I, and I do know people personally who have had issues, had, ha, have had their pressure pot blow up on them. Every single one of those people was going way over the, the maximum working pressure or had actually physically altered it, like welded stuff themselves onto the lid and stuff and took all the safety measures off and all the, you know, like the cases where people had a problem are, they're just idiots. Like, so, you know, as long as you're using it the way it should be, you should be fine, you know, and that's every once in a while, there might be something where there, there could be a failure, but I just, I don't think that, I don't know anyone that, that was using it within its limitations that had a problem with one. So hopefully that might, you know, dispel some, some scariness. Um, the other thing is what you can do uh, if you want to get into this, get a pressure pot, but stay the heck away from it. Um, you could like put the pressure pot in like a box or something like that and get a long, you know, hose where, where you're the, the on and off switch for the, for the air is, is much further or the, like the ball valve where you're operating it like way away from it. That's another option. If you really don't feel comfortable near a pressure pot, you can kind of put it somewhere else and then operate that air on and off from far away so that it starts filling and you're not anywhere near it. it it's just an, it's something to think about it. There are ways to kind of get around it. So anyway, guys, I got to get going because I got a couple of things to do. I got to fix my the print that didn't work. Um, I will show you the printer real quick. There's going to be a video coming out. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to use this camera. I'm going to use the other one. Let me, let me switch this guy. Oh, shoot. Hopefully this thing is charged now. So I can move it. <clears throat> so I'll show you the printer. In fact, I can pretty much show you my failed print here, I think. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it died. Shoot. Hold on. <laughs> it was taking... I couldn't get... It wasn't charging the camera. It was just keeping it on. So let me, let me start over. Hold on, guys. Get this thing rolling here. We got it. It's plugged in now. Scoot back a little bit. Okay, so we got that camera rolling. Um, and before I forget, I, I, I probably won't, but I just want to make sure I, to thank um, Daryl and Jeff for super chatting. I appreciate the support. It goes to buying things like 3D printers for the shop and resin <laughs> that we can use on the stream. So here it is. I got the Elegoo Saturn. It's kind of a medium size. I mean, there are bigger ones. Um, it's relatively big in the, in the size, in, in the realm of resin printers. Um, but 
um, one of the reasons I, I decided to get this one specifically, or a bigger one, um, because the Elegoo Mars, if you're going to be printing relatively small things mostly, that's a really good printer, and it's only about 300 bucks, I think, maybe 350. Um, but I wanted the Saturn because it goes higher. Um, some of the stuff that I'm trying to print are going to be taller um, than the Mars would print. So here we go. We got it right here. Let's uh, raise the bed. Since we screwed this print up. This really sucks. Oh, it was printing pretty nicely, though. Did I switch? Yeah, okay. I did switch camera views. I'm going to kind of drop you guys down a little bit. We're going to play around with this. Oh, let's go. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying to lower the camera and the, the battery thing was... Power plug was dripping and, I don't know, pulling everything off. So here we go. Oh, here we go. So I've already done these. I got a video. Um, I started messing around with 3D printing with a with a regular, I call it quote unquote regular, um, but with a just the FDM style printers or FFF or you know whatever filament. Um, and so I, I had the if you want to see this thing how I used it, it's a pinstripe model. So I got a video. Just look up pinstripe um, or 3D printer and pinstripe and you'll see but this thing turned out this worked well it was going good until i pulled the the plug out of the wall <laughs> for the printer for anybody that's just kind of joined and didn't see that i was i thought i was unplugging my my nail curing uv light thing and i unplugged the 3d printer as it was in the middle of a print but pretty excited about this thing um i'm just going to kind of this over here for now so it's basically, it's using UV resin. Um, and so here's the first print, first thing. It's like a test print. But these resin printers get really, really amazing quality um, prints um, it, compared to anything that I've ever made on, on my filament style printers. I mean, literally, I took this thing out of the box, plugged in the USB drive it came with. It had a pre-sliced file and I just hit print. And it was way better than anything I've ever printed on any other printer, <laughs> the, the filament style ones. No matter what the settings are, how long I messed with it, it was fabulous. And so I'm pretty excited about this thing. It's pretty cool. So we'll have lots of videos. I got, hopefully, there's a lot of things that require things to work that I have planned. So we'll have to see if everything works. But um, I have heard, um, I was talking to Chad Schimmel and he said that these things turn a lot better than that was the other problem I had with the the old style printers the or like the filament style. Most of the materials turned terrible. It just it was not fun to turn them at all. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that this this other material you know this this UV resin, hopefully it'll be a really nice turn. And the other thing is it it adheres really well supposedly to to casting resins. So. It sounds like a win-win-win to me, and I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> I might actually go and buy one of the Elegoo Mars size, because one of the problems is I want to do some, some testing with different resins, and I actually, I don't want to have to fill a big tank. It didn't occur to me. Um, so I'm, I might actually expand my 3D printing line already, uh, but I'm pretty excited. Uh, the freezer is just re uh, resins. I keep my cactus juice. Um, that stuff, you don't want it to get above 80 degrees. Otherwise, it can just cure in the jug. Um, and I keep some of my resins in there, mainly in the summer. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, but Bill, the problem with, I don't recommend people pour resin into the bottom of their pressure pots because the problem is that'll work, you know, on the surface. So as long as every surface you ever put it on was the same level, the same, you know, if, if you put it on, if, if you poured the stuff in and you had it sitting on, on a level that was, you know, slightly off, just a little bit, and then you moved your pressure pot, it's not ever going to be level again. So that's the reason I don't recommend that. I think you can just stick either one of those trays in or just get a piece of wood cut in a circle and, and you're fine. You don't have to mess around with dumping stuff in there. 
Yeah, I, I'm actually already thinking about the flexible build plate <laughs> because, man, that I well, a couple things like I can play with the settings. Um, I, all I've done is print things that, that were on that that were like whatever the, the standard settings were. Um, and I will tell you what I was like jamming it off of that build plate like it was so stuck so I can change the the first layers and stuff like that the time uh, the exposure levels on the first layers but um, I'm even even with that I'm kind of thinking like why not just keep those exposure levels where they are and just get a flexible plate because that just seems way easier yeah there's epoxies I actually I think there might be even urethanes um, a lot of, actually a lot of UV there, I think there, there's a lot of all of them because I know that I'm almost hundred percent certain that like Aluma UV, and I know this is not printing resin. This is different a little bit, but this is, I'm pretty sure this is a urethane based resin, the Aluma UV. Um, I know that there's epoxies, but there's a ton of polyester resin, uh, UV resins out there too. So I think it's kind of the same, but I, you know. I would imagine that most are epoxies. Uh, the ones that I'm using are epoxy based. Um, tell you what, I don't really like the smell of these things, but whatever. I'm going to be moving this thing out of my, my shop area eventually. All right, guys, I got to get running because I got to get some work done still tonight. So hopefully, like I said, hopefully you enjoyed kind of seeing those experiments. Can't wait to see how these two compare. Uh, I guess all three of them compare. Um, hopefully these ones won't turn out terrible, although I will say that I have kind of done some tests like this with deep pour and it wasn't, it wasn't pretty, is kind of what I'll, th I'll say. But we'll see how this one turns out. It might, well, you never know. We might get some good luck, but I think these guys might turn out pretty good. So uh, let's see here. Is there any other news or updates or anything like that? I, I am working on this first video, like kind of, it's just an unboxing and like first print. Not, not much going on with the three, it's a, the, for the 3D printer. Um, but I am working on that, so I'm hoping that that video will, it's not going up this weekend. Maybe by next Sunday, it'll be ready to go. Um, so I'm start, trying to start slowly getting back into to videos, like regular ones coming up. So, uh, and definitely, definitely have a lot of ideas for video uh, with this, this resin printer. One of the problems is we probably aren't gonna do anything on the live stream with actual 3d printing because it takes like hours for for these things to happen so i think those are going to be a lot better for just regular videos um, but we will be casting things that's the whole point of that is i want to be able to take the part and cast it you know in in resin and make some blanks so anyway guys i hope you have a great night tonight hopefully uh you know you can get in the shop maybe this weekend get some resin casting or works you know workshop time get something made tinker around in there um, I appreciate you guys joining the fun. And again, thank you to Daryl and Jeff for supporting the show with the super chats. Really appreciate that. Uh, but until next time, guys, we will be back next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. We'll do something. My resin from Alumalite. So this is a side, side note. I was kind of out of Alumalite and waiting for my order. It's coming Monday. So we should be all good to go for, for some casting next week. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but it should be pretty fun. So come back out next Friday, or not next Friday, next Wednesday. Uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time, and we'll do a little bit more resin casting live. So again, have a great night, guys, and I will see you on the next stream.